Hello everyone, and welcome to Spiral Spiel. Today is a slight cause for celebration. We're up to episode 10, we made it to double digits, hooray, huzzah, and all that. And of course, it is the new year as well, it's now 2013, so happy new year to everyone. By the time you watch this, it'll be December 2nd, not December, past December, it'll be January 2nd. So, I hope you weren't too hungover yesterday, I hope you managed alright. So let's throw some confetti in there and celebrate. Huzzahs! If I do my usual statistics bit, 2700 views. It was 2000 last time I said, which was two weeks ago at the stage. So that's been 350 views a week. 50 views a day. I'm liking that. I'm liking how many people like that. I, I'd like how many people like what I do. It's very reassuring. Very positive experience, I'm, I'm liking it a lot. Did I tell you that I liked it a lot? I think I did. If you like that I liked it a lot, why don't you like this video? That would really help me out. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, thanks to everyone who's helped me out, encouraged me, posted in the comments, liked, subscribed, all that jazz. Everybody who's pushed me along. A very positive experience, all in all. Uh, I apologise before we get started particularly thoroughly. For the current video quality, most it might be stuttering about, jumping a bit. My computer's not too happy at the minute. It's kind of been having issues for the last week since, well, since I took my PC home for Christmas to my parents. It's, I've, it's that seems to happen every time I've taken a PC home. It, it seems to break it every damn time. And this time seems to be no exception. My ne my beast mode computer that I built a year ago is now on the fritz. And I can't figure out what's wrong with it. I've been running a lot of diagnostic stuff and it tells me everything's running totally fine, which isn't true. It's clearly not. This was running fine two weeks ago. It's not now. This is a problem. No one knows anything about fixing bizarre problems with computer performance. Please let me know, because I don't know what's wrong with it. I mean, if something was genuinely outright broken, I could probably figure it out and fix it. It's just the fact that it's not working very well is more confusing than anything else. So, until that's fixed, yes, apologies for current video quality. Hopefully that won't take too long to fix. I'm really hoping it doesn't. Okay, uh, obviously another thing I've neglected to mention, and we've already forged well on with it, is that I'm not doing the usual run-of-the-mill clockworks missions, doing a proper rank mission this time, doing the Romulus Twins boss. So this is a rough guide on how to solo the Romulus Twins on a poorly functioning PC. Normally I do this really quite well, but I've been having trouble <laughs> trying to dodge things when my frame rate's stuttering like this. So I might do quite so well. That's my excuse anyway, but that, I'm going to use that as my excuse if ever I die. It's my PC, it's not my fault. I suppose, this being a spiral spiel and all, I should get on with the topic. It's the start of the new year, it's the kind of time that everybody else wants to talk about Christmas and New Year's and New Year's resolutions and all that jazz. I don't. Actually, I do. I do want to talk about it, but there are more pressing concerns at hand, and those will be addressed before anything else. Those may have to wait till next week. Right now, I need to talk about the Advent of Indies project that I did throughout December, because that was an interesting project indeed for me. Those who weren't following along, I made 24 videos over the course of 24 days, showcasing 23 different uh, indie games. I didn't pick them out myself, there's a German dev team, Rat King Entertainment was mostly the guys behind doing that, they, they put on quite a good uh, little show doing that, that was quite good. So at the peak there I was putting out minimum 10 videos a week, because obviously 7 days in a week, 7 videos for one a day, and then on top of that my usual 3. It did go beyond that, we got into the whole super hexagon thing, and one of the videos I did twice because I didn't give it a fair review the first time around. So I probably peaked at like 12 or 13 videos one week. 
which was kind of the challenge was just to see how much content I could actually cope with producing without driving myself completely and totally loco. Turns out it's a fair bit actually. All these people that are making content all the time and quit their jobs to it. Don't need to do that. You can make loads of content and have a job. <laughs> I'd rather not have the job, but you know, um, somebody's got to pay the bills. So, until I'm up there with the Minecraft guys, I can't do this full time yet. Shame, shame. But that's the way it's got to be. So, yeah, the upshot is that I now know that I can cope with a bigger workload than I anticipated I might be able to. It does mean I've got no time to do anything else whatsoever with my life, but I can do it. Ah, there's no loot in this room. Why is there never any loot when I want some loot? So, one of the main things I've learned from this experience, aside from how many videos I can make, is I really need to try a lot more new things, because most of the stuff on the list I probably would never actually have considered making had I not been essentially coerced into playing it. Something that I wouldn't normally have really given the time of day. There's only one game on the list I can act genuinely say I had looked at before and was thinking of playing at some point. That would have been the Mirror Lied, because it was by Freebirds Games and they made To The Moon, which you may recall from my previous video, I rather quite like. It's one of my favourite games, ever. So yeah, definitely looking at playing through the rest of their stuff at some stage. Say how much I like it, you'd have thought it'd be sooner than later, but... Yeah, lots of things to do, lots of Winterfest missions to grind and stuff, you know. There's no time for silly stories. But yeah, uh, quite aside from Mirror Light, there's a few other well, a few other titles in there that surprised me that I didn't expect to be as good as they were. McPixel, I suppose, probably one of the notable ones, along with the uh, Tiny and Big. In fact, actually, those two both already available on Steam, so they're obviously of a reasonable quality. It's, I. I admit, not everything in the Steam library is top-notch, but it's got to be of a pretty decent quality to make it onto there. Uh, McPixel, quite well acclaimed as well, actually. I don't know why I've been ignoring it for so long. Turns out that's quite a charming, sort of, really quick... I, I, the best I can compare it to, actually, is WarioWare. Just lots of really short mini-games, more than anything else. But a lot sillier. I mean, uh, WarioWare is already really silly, but... McPixel... Uh, Big Pixel is a more adult silliness, I think, perhaps. Explosions and strange inserting things into cows. I don't know what that was about, I'll be honest. But it was bizarre. I liked it. Uh, Tiny and Big is another one that I, I'd kind of looked at just... It had an interesting art style, but every time I looked at it I've gone, that doesn't look like an interesting game, it doesn't look like something I want to play. So I just never bothered. Having actually been, again, coerced into doing so. Holy hell, that game's good! The, the cutting and pulling and all the physics, it's, it's just a really, really great sort of physics. Let's say, I'm hesitant to call it a physics based platform puzzler because that lumps it in with a lot of really terrible games, and it's not, it's a really great game. Everything's done really well. And it's something I would like to play more of. The sort of stuff I could finish in one sitting I quite enjoyed, and it's no secret it's the really silly arty titles that are scarcely games that I quite enjoy doing. Jonas Kairatsi's uh, Fabulous Screech was very little game, mostly, for my part, dramatic reading more than anything else. I thought that was quite a lot of fun to do. I don't know quite what everyone else made of it. So I got quite a few views actually, so I think it was one of the more popular videos. So perhaps I need to look at more of his stuff, because The Sea Will Claim Everything, which was his premium title on that day, uh, that has been doing around. I've uh, been seeing a lot of mention on Twitter lately of a lot of praise, quite frankly, for lots of other indie developers saying 
So you'll claim everything. One of the best titles of the year. So that's probably worth a look, I suspect. So I might have to do that. And perhaps you'll get another dramatic reading out of me on that one. We shall see. Might be worth finishing the Fabulous Screech as well while we're at it because God knows I didn't actually finish the game. I just played the first 15, 20 minutes of it. Uh, what else was there? Stray Whisker. Stray Whisker was a lot of fun. A game... Only a game in the loose sense. It was me... It was me pretending to be a cat for 10 minutes is what that was. That was tremendously silly, a lot of fun. I'm not sure anybody else particularly cared for it, didn't get many views. I say I didn't think anyone else cared for it, but I know the developer quite enjoyed it, because I got, I got a response from him on in the comments section. I'm, so I'm glad he liked it. He's, he's the important one, he made the game, you know? So I'm not bothered if the rest of you did or not. Hmm. So I'd like I'd like to play more of that sort of thing, but I don't know what else does that kind of thing. That was such that was a different experience to anything else. I can't possibly think what else fits the bill, you know. Stop electrocuting things. Jeez, ow! Can I have health? I want some health now. So. It, all in all, December has left me with a reasonably lengthy list of things that I need to start LPing. Definitely want to do Tiny and Big. Quite like to do McPixel. Uh, a couple of things from Jonas Karatsis, yeah, definitely worth a look at some point in the future. But there's a couple of other things that popped up in the last week or so-ish. Little Inferno has been doing the rounds from a number of LPs lately. Outcast have already started started doing that in the last few weeks as well, and that's a really entertaining title. I've been kind of holding off on it until it came on sale, and then it went on sale in the Steam sale, but not but nearly as much as I thought it might. Turns out, if you go over to their official website, they had it on sale in the Humble Store for even less. So I've just bought it on there and started playing it. By the time this video goes out, the first part will have gone up on Monday, so that's already there for you to go watch. And you should go do that, because it's a really, really fun title. I had a lot of fun playing it. I got to do a lot of silly voices, which I know everybody likes. So, yeah, that's a good one. And a new series for the new year. Also... Something I spotted on Steam the other day was in the new section I saw a trailer for a sequel to a game that I played earlier in the year. And it's a game that I recommended in my best of 2012 list. And it's a game that almost nobody else in the world played, I think, frankly. It was quite hyped up before launch. I saw in indie gaming circles, quite a few people mentioning and talking about this game. A lot of discussion. A lot of people seemed interesting in it. Inter interesting in it? They sound. They seemed interested in it, perhaps. But upon launch, it didn't get particularly great reception. I mean, yeah, the graphic style was really quite rough. If we're honest, the developers themselves admitted as much. They said, "We this looks awful." Sorry about that. Uh, it almost feels as though the sequel is perhaps a kind of apology in that respect. In the same way that games like Final Fantasy XIV did, and things like All Points Bulletin, ABB, it's kind of the game wasn't as good as everyone expected to expected it to be, and then after after launch, the developers gone. Yeah, sorry, our bad. Here's this. Here's this gesture that makes up for it. And in this case, what they've done is it appears to be entirely free to, um, that is, say, a Valley Without Wind 2 appears to be entirely free to owners of a Valley Without Wind 1. Quite frankly, I was prepared to buy the damn thing as soon as I saw the trailer, went onto the store, yep, you can pay to get beta access, let's do that because I want to see what's going on in the sequel. The sequel sounds good, let's have a look at that. 
add it to the cart, try to check out, you cannot buy it. It is already in your library. Would you like to make a gift purchase? Hang on. Turns out the game had already been sat in my library for three days and hadn't, nobody had told me. So that was that. Ooh, sneaky top Spiral Knights tip time here now. This bit, I've, I've tried to educate people on runs about this in the past, but nobody ever seemed to know whenever I've done it, so clearly word is not spreading. So I'm going to spread it this way now. Make sure the purple gate here is down. Make sure it's down when you hit that when you hit the party switch. Yellow up, purple down. Because you want to be going to the right and not up at this switch. Up top, there are turrets which fire sideways and which fire down at you. I shall show you by activating it here. If you go up to the top, hitting that switch stops the turrets from firing down and starts them firing across instead, making it slightly easier to traverse that bit. However, if you carry a vase from down below, like I'm doing, there's a reason to the madness. I'm carrying the vase for a reason. You can throw it at the switch, turn off those turrets, and there's just no real obstacle to this bit whatsoever, and it's really easy. It's just a little thing, but everything that makes life easier. It's much appreciated. Because God knows I'm incompetent enough. Yep, yep see? Competent like that. So, with that handy little pro tip out of the way, where were we? Where were we? A valley without wind, I think we were. So, yeah, I think the valley without wind 2, they appear to have tightened up the graphics, which it badly, badly needed, and honestly, it wasn't hard to, hard to improve on what existed anyway. So, it looks a lot prettier now, and. Before it was a fairly open-ended, open-world adventure, which didn't seem to... I'm not aware that it particularly went anywhere, you just kind of kept leveling up and kept improving and expanding and building an empire and superpowers and becoming awesome. I'm not quite sure where it went. I played for a few hours and it... I never got any sense of story from what I played out of it. Maybe, maybe I need to keep going a lot further before I found any story, but I never saw any. Uh, here we've storied right from the off. Which is, you have infiltrated the inner circle of some evil overlord type chap. He's treated you with a special device which grants you immortality, which is always nice to have, you know. And as one of his most trusted minions, you must go out there and create a rebellion to take him down. Nope, you go. Yes, yes, you go. I may need to I may need to concentrate on what I'm doing with switches here rather than talking. So yeah, you gain all sorts of superpowers by advancing around the world. It's the gameplay's got a lot. It it just builds upon the original. I feel, I think it was most of it's same kind of thing. But beep 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 beep. You go you go you go. Yes. It's tricky to do when you're trying to talk, I've got to be honest. Damn. You. Yes, got it. Yes, I got it. Uh, right, yes. Evil Overlord, minions, that kind of jazz. There does to be a sort of turn based strategy element to it, in that the the overworld grid that you move around, now the overlord moves around and you kind of take turns in doing things. So it takes a little while before he gets going and he starts moving around and I think at first he's not wise to your uh, your turning traitor to him or being a double agent, whatever, it's not like you're ever particularly loyal to him I suppose. And I, d I don't know how it plays out but it looks it looks strategic is what it is. And I've been waiting for them all level. Thank you. Thank you very much. I needed that. Okay. I know I'm doing with the boss. I didn't need that, but good to have a little bit of backup. And let us go do the boss. So yeah, eventually he grows wise to uh, your double agentness, and he comes and tries and kills you, and all that good stuff. So eventually, yeah, 
start playing strategy and cat and mouse and chasing each other around and trying to kill each other, I think. I don't know, I haven't played enough of the game yet to find anything like that out, so it is something I would like to elaborate on, so I will be playing some more of that shortly, I think. Are we not going down? We don't appear to be advancing to the next floor. This is very... Ah, oh, I didn't want to give you guys spoilers anyway. Now that... No, I never did get to do the boss there. I don't know what's happened. That was bugged. Fix your game, Three Rings. Fix your game. So, here we are back at the Guild Hall, and it's all Christmassy. Someone's acquired a couple of Christmas trees. Someone's also acquired the requisite 500,000 crowns to buy as the Hunter's Lodge. So we got Snarbalax sat in the front entrance now, which is cool. He's cool. I like the Snarbalax. Anyway, the uh, last few points I needed to elaborate on is that obviously I've proven up to myself and to everyone that I can cope with a more than three video a week workload. So I'm going to try and do more than three videos a week from now on. I'm going to try. I mean, I'm not promising anything. I wouldn't quote me on it or anything, but sort of penciled in a schedule for something I would quite like to do. Let's see how well it works. PC trouble may cause some hiccups at first, but as soon as I'm up and running, there should be a schedule I could very viably stick to. Monday, we've still got scribble notes, so that's still ongoing. I've not finished that. There's a fair bit to do in that as well, so that can continue. Tuesday, we'll be showing off the brand new shiny Avali Without Win 2 beta, because it doesn't launch until February. Wednesday is obviously Spiral Night's Day. It's always Spiral Night's Day, except for when it is Christmas Day. Thursday, I shall try and do Tiny and Big in Grandpa's Leftovers, because that was such a fun game, I've got to show that off to the world. However, obviously computer struggles are making that really, really difficult to record. I've tried it, it didn't come out well, I'm afraid. I've got a lot of dud footage sat on my hard drive at the moment of that. Friday, I think I shall continue on with Little Inferno. Obviously I've started that series, it's going well, it's a lot of fun. And uh, it's something I do want to see through to the end. It shouldn't be a long game actually, it should, I should be over and done with that. In seven or eight videos, I'm estimating at this stage. It might go a little bit longer. I don't know. Either way, uh, McPixel then sits as sort of a reserve game to fill whichever gaps come up. Whichever game I finish first, McPixel can replace. And then I've got other stuff on the back burner, like Jonas Gairazzi's, that I would like to do at a later date. So I shall attempt to do that from next week onwards but we shall just have to see how it goes, you know. Because a computer trouble and all that may throw some spanners in the works. If it does, I'm sorry, but I shall attempt to. That's, that's my New Year's resolution. There we go, I got to talk about it anyway. New Year's resolution, I will do five videos a week this year. That's what I'm going to do. It's entertainment for you guys, and it's fun for me, and Everybody wins. I don't see a downside to that. It's a very good one. So, now that that's now that that's out of the way, I should go hug the snabbelax. Hug the snabbelax. Uh, I can't do my usual sign-off sword swingy thing. I don't have a sword. I'm in the guild hall. That's that. This is a, this is a tragedy. This cannot be. Oh no, the world is ending. Uh. Pretend I've got a sword and I'm swinging it. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye!